The Crimson Tide of Alabama won the toss. They will have the football for the first time offensively today with Jeremiah Castile dropping back along with Darrell White and Major Ogilvy. Castile, number 19, the man they want to return the kickoff from Mike Johnson, a sophomore for the Fighting Irish out of Rochester, New York. Game number four between these two great universities ready to go. The referee is Pete Williams. Johnson hammers it. It's Castile at the one. Three blockers in front. Found a little crack across the 20, out to about the 23 before he is brought down. The Alabama backfield, Don Jacobs, the senior from Scottsboro, will start in the ball game. Joe Jones will be at left halfback, and Major Ogilvy at right half out of the wishbone, and the fullback is Billy Jackson. The wide receiver split end is Jesse Bendross. And here we go from just short of the 23 of Alabama as the Fighting Irish line up with a five-man defensive front. Now they slip a Durson up there to make it a six-man front. And they break the bone by sending Jones in motion and Jacobs on the shore line gives to Ogilvy. Ogilvy is caught by number 70, Scott Zedek, the defensive end. In that particular defensive alignment, he was lined up almost as a tackle, and he has got to be a big man in the Notre Dame defensive unit today. Zedek, number 70, has 15 plays for losses. You can see that he read the play very smartly, jumped over a would-be blocker by Jackson, and made the tackle on Oakley for a loss. A big starting play for Notre Dame. Second down and 12 from the 21 for Alabama. Again, it is a five-man front with a four linebacker stuck right in there. It's like working against an eight-man front. But Billy Jackson punches a hole over the right side and gets a little operating room across the 25. Joe Beasley is a 245-pound tackle. Scott Allison is a 241-pound guard. Steve Mott, 244 at center. Vince Cowell, 231 at guard. Eddie McCombs is a 244 center. Bart Kraut, the big tight end, 225. It is third down, and it is about five for Alabama. The ball just short of the 38, and it goes to Ogilvy, and Ogilvy is caught by Zedek again and dropped right about the line of scrimmage. So Scott Zedek playing the contained position as a defensive end, but in the alignment Notre Dame is showing him here, he's almost a stand-up tackle position, and nobody messed with him that time. He just went in and got his man. Excellent play. One thing that uh, North, uh, Alabama will do is run the draw play on third down, and he was ready for it. The punt is away by Alabama's Humphrey, and uh, it is accepted by Dave Durison. And Durison is gang tackled back at the Fighting Irish 38. It was a 34-yard punt and about a one-yard return. It looks like a penalty flag has been dropped at the point. Blair Keel, the freshman from Columbus, Indiana, starts at quarter. It'll be Phil Carter at halfback out of Tacoma, Washington. John Sweeney, the big blocking fullback. against the white team, illegal use of hand. And the rest of the alignment, as you see there, hearing the voice of Pete Williams, the referee, defining the penalty against the Irish, illegal use of hands, and it backs them up. Rod, Rod Bone, number 26, was the offender. It's a five-yard penalty which is a new rule this year of illegal use of the hands previously would have been 15 yards. So Notre Dame will go to work first down from their own 32. They play on the rug here at Legion Field in Birmingham. They shift into the eye. Carter is a slashing sort of a runner. He hits it out to the 35, 36, close to the 37. And the Fighting Irish offensive front, Mike Scheiner at tackle, 250-pound sophomore. Randy Ellis is a 251-pound guard. John Scully is a 255 senior at center. Tim Thayer, a sophomore at 258. Phil Post Derrick, 6'9", 260, a junior. And Nick Veer, the tight end, a 236 senior, 6'4", out of Cincinnati. It is second down and about five for the Fighting Irish. Carter into the stack. Gets a yard. Defensively for Alabama, De Niro, Braggs, Lyles, Klein, Jr., the five-man front. Scott and Boyd are the linebackers. Secondary, Clements, Castile, Wilcox, and Tucker. 
One thing we'll see from the Alabama defense is a lot of blitzing, particularly on passing situations, trying to throw the quarterback for a loss. Third down, long three. Keel gives to the fullback, and the fullback finds a hole. John Sweeney, a sophomore out of Deerfield, Illinois, over the left side for the first first down of the ball game as he runs it out to the 45 of Notre Dame. One thing that uh, Dan Devine told me yesterday, he plans to use the same game plan that Mississippi State used against Alabama. That is rushing inside most every down, something that Alabama has not defended very well so far. Mississippi State went for over 300 yards, tackle to tackle against the Tide. First down for the Irish from the 45. They give it off to the fullback and Pete Buchanan in relief of Sweeney. Gets pretty good gain out of it, about five. As long as you're going to pick up five yards on that first carry, you're going to be in pretty good shape. In the high formation, it's difficult to get outside, Keith, uh, since you don't run an option play. Most of their plays will either be inside or start outside and cut right back. The fullbacks are the messengers. Sweeney is back in there. Holohan goes to the top of the picture. Hunter is down at the bottom of the picture. The wide people. It is second down and five from midfield. It is Carter, and Carter is ridden down by number 91, Warren Lyles, the nose guard, and number 50, Randy Scott, the left linebacker. Alabama has three excellent football players in the defensive line, in Bragg, Lyle, and E.J. Jr., who has been all Southeastern Conference the last two years. Scott and Boyd, the two linebackers, have great range, and if you don't really block them, they will, you will have to contend with them on every down. The Irish look now at a third and five as they snuff the last play. Hunter and Holohan to the same side. Now they're sending Holohan in motion. Heel to Carter, reverses back. No, Carter kept it. He faked the handoff and the tied defensive flow got him. Scott was over there in a big hurry to force him to the sidelines and out of bounds. I believe on that particular play as we looked at the Georgia Auburn score James Brooks that Auburn career rushing record, 3,381 yards. Fourth down. That's a big lead now with Auburn having jumped out to a 7 0 lead, then 7 3. Georgia coming back to lead by 10. Georgia wins. They win the conference championship and remain the only team in the country with an unblemished record. It is punting time now. Heel the quarterback. It's it high, hangs it, forcing a fair catch call by Major Ogilvy. And Alabama will have the football after a 35-yard hanging punt, first down at their own 18-yard line with no score. You're looking at Legion Field in Birmingham. It is stuffed to the gills. I mean stuffed. It's the toughest ticket in the country so far this football season. I suppose when they get through counting, it'll be 80,000 or so with almost 100 members of the media here covering the event. Alabama to the attack now from the 18. Second time they've had the ball. Don Jacobs is your quarterback. Jacobs stands up, loops it downfield. The pass is incomplete, intended for Tim Clark, a junior from Newnan, Georgia. And that was a heck of a defensive play by Johnny Krim. Let's set the fighting Irish defense for you. Up front, the big guys are Hankard, Gramke, Kramer, and Zedek. The linebackers, Zavakman, Krabel, and Rodzinski. The defensive secondary, which is a bunch of big kids. They are tall and, and big. Corrin, Krim, Jurison, Gibbon. Second down and 10, Alabama. High throwing on first down from their own 18. Jacobs rides it off in the wishbone to the fullback. And uh, Billy Jackson, a senior from Phoenix City, hits it out. Pretty good pickup on it. He got it to the 23, give him five. He's carried two times for 11 yards. Then 21 backs carry the football for Alabama this year. And 11 of them average over five yards, Chief. Dan Devine told me that he's got to stop Jackson up the middle first if they're going to have any success defending against the wishbone. Two very good defensive teams having at it here. Third down and five. They break the bone again. Send Ogilvy in motion. Jacobs on a roll. He loops it out, trying to set up a screen out here for Jones. Ogilvy got his block, but they needed more than one man out in front. And Jones just dropped short of the first down. The Bob, man, Crable. Bob Crable is the middle linebacker. He's the leading tackler. He's one of the outstanding football players in America. Good range, good awareness, the instinct that you have to have. You can see him covering 
Jones, number 24, the halfback on a flat pass. That's the kind of range that he has. Woody Humphrey in, the left-footed kicker. Gets a little pressure from Hanker. Gets off a fine kick. And Krim goes back, has a look at it, lets it bounce, and Alabama will down it. Back at the Fighting Irish 33. That was a 43-yard punt hung up there by Woody Humphrey. ABC's presentation of NFL Monday Night Football next Monday at 9 Eastern Time will come to you out of Seattle's Kingdom. A couple of tough ones out of the Western Conference of the AFC with the Oakland Raiders leading the conference. The Seahawks have not won a game at home in the regular season, but they're going to jump on somebody. Uh, Our special <laughs> Thursday night edition has San Diego and Miami for you. All right, first down for the Fighting Irish at the 33. It's a five-man defensive front, gap defense for Alabama, and uh, the, full, uh, the tailback, Phil Carter, tries to run into that gap, and he got about two yards on the carry. Alabama very desperately wants to force Notre Dame into a passing game by stopping their run because they have this freshman quarterback, Blair Field, who is completing only 42% of his passes. We also had Jim Stone in the backfield that time. They had lined up Carter at fullback and Stone at tailback. Stone has come out now. Jim's been having some good games of late. It is second down and eight for Notre Dame. Come on, Blair, boy. Here's Keel on a roll. He looks and hums, and it's incomplete. Threw the ball for Hunter, and Hunter was hit by number 18, or 19, rather, Castile, just as the ball arrived. Castile is, one of, is a sophomore out of Phoenix City. And the Alabama coaching staff really think he's going to be a terrific player. Nebraska jumping out to a 14-0 halftime lead over Iowa State. And Nebraska plays Oklahoma next week in Lincoln. And as usual, it's for the Big 8 championship. Ohio State winning big over Iowa at halftime. Michigan won today over Purdue. Third down and eight for Notre Dame. Steele rolls it the other way, gets his pass off. The pass is complete to Carter. Carter, a hard fellow to bring down, bounces off the Alabama tackler, Ricky Tucker, and picks up a first down for the Irish. This is the same pattern of formation that Notre Dame hurt Alabama with three years ago by double, using a double wing, forcing a linebacker to, to cover one of the halfbacks out in the flat. That time, the corner came up and couldn't just simply couldn't hold Carter. Hunter, the dangerous one, comes wide to the right side. Tommy Wilcox has come up on the line. Number 15, the strong safety. Now he's moving around to the other side. Alabama defense dancing around with Notre Dame here. They give the ball to Carter. Carter for a couple, maybe one. And Tucker and Wilcox were involved in the play. Tucker was following the man in motion. Wilcox went to the other side, and Tommy wound up in exactly the right place. One of the things that both teams have been using is multiple formations, and they serve a useful purpose because it forces the defense to make some adjustments right at the last minute. Cot Wilcox was, as he usually is, right at the spot of the play. Mike Bushka, number 17, in the lineup for the first time today at the flank of position. He's wide to the open side of the field. Keel on a quarterback draw. And Keel moves for about five, six maybe as he gets it into the Alabama side of the field at the 48-yard line. John Scully, the center, snapped the ball. Keel stepped back on a delay and then just slid off the left side of Mr. Scully, and the dogs are rolling down in Auburn. One high next yards, Herschel Walker has made. The great freshman tailback. Herschel have his own computer for the time of the junior. <laughs> He's fast approaching the all-time record for Preston Washington. Third down and three to give it to Carter. Carter's got a first down. And the young man from Tacoma, Washington, runs it down to the Alabama. 41, first down for Notre Dame. Tom, Tom Thayer and Phil Posterick really opened up a nice hole. And Phil Carter is an outstanding runner, but he's missed five ball games. Although last week against Georgia Tech, he ran seven times and fumbled twice. Got a very deep thigh bruise. One of those things is just almost impossible to heal. Time, and he took five games to get well. First down, Irish. Just short of the Alabama 41. Here to the fullback. And the fullback, Pete Buchanan, a 220-pounder, gets it across the 40 to the 39. Got to give him the better part of three on that carry. Bring up second down along seven. This is the place on the field where Alabama will 
build a line of defense trying to give Notre Dame a bad play. There's Dan Devine, who's never lost to Alabama, 2-0, trying to prevent Notre Dame from getting in the field goal range. And with Harry Oliver, they're getting close. Tony Hunter to the right side. Olihan the flanker. Give it to the fullback. And Sweeney finds daylight. Penalty flag thrown out of the umpire's pocket. And we'll wait for the decision on the penalty. It's almost surely against the Fighting Irish. And Pete Williams will define it for you when it's made with 5.05 to go in the first quarter of play. No score in the ball game. It's going to be interesting whether it's a 5 or 15. We'll know right now. We have an illegal use of the hands holding against the white team. That's 15. That's 15. Some other scores now. We started late in Birmingham, so many of them are nearing completion. Pittsburgh on a roll today over Army. Penn State started slowly. Temple led them for a long time, but that sets up the Pitt Penn State game, which you'll see here on ABC on Friday, November 28th. Both of them going to wind up in a bowl. Oklahoma out over Missouri, 10 to nothing in the third quarter. And of course, that leads into their game with Nebraska next week. LSU and Mississippi State having at it 24 24. And Kentucky has jumped to a lead over Florida. A final there with North Carolina State beating Duke. Jim Stone and Pete Buchanan are the setbacks as Notre Dame comes out in a shotgun formation and Keel drops straight back. And he goes deep with it. He's throwing for Hollahan. It is thrown out of bounds. Tommy Wilcox and Jeremiah Castillo are the defensive people who make the play. Wilcox comes down with the ball, but he's out of bounds. Fullahan is going to run a pattern that goes in and out, but a long yardage. That doesn't have much of a chance, and Notre Dame is going to be right there. Castile, sophomore, number 19. Wilcox, the safety man, number 15, have it played perfectly. He intercepts it momentarily, but is out of bounds. It looked to me like he almost had that one foot in when he possessed that ball. <laughs> the ball is back now at the 45, where it is third down. They've got to go to the Alabama 32 to get a first down out of the shotgun field. Looks to throw it. Can't get it off. Number 51 comes banging in to make the play. Gary DeNiro and Jackie Klein. Let's look at the last play and see if, in fact, Wilcox is out of bounds. He's got the ball is in his hands and his left foot is inbound. Keith, you are absolutely right. There's some argument there. Too late now. Fourth down. Fighting Irish are going to punt it. Blair Keel will do the kicking. Spins one deep. It runs over the back to the 11. And Major is met by three white shirts at the 15. That was a 49-yard punt by the Notre Dame quarterback with 3-5-6 to play in the first quarter. And we've got a defensive struggle going has yet to have the luxury of uh, advanced field position of the ball game. They have possessed the ball. This will be their fourth time. They will start from the 16. The first possession was the 23, then the 18, now the 16. So this is the third possession. It's called Be Careful Country. Fullback, Jackson, hit right at the line of scrimmage. Muscles for a couple. Ran right into Bob Craven. Looks like Joe Gremke got a piece of him, too. Alabama has a history of getting out of the blocks quickly. Hard to do with this type of field position. As you said, Keith, they've got to be extremely careful. And I have seen Bear Bryant run the option play from this position on the field many times and pitch it back successfully. They've got Clark Wise. They've tried to go deep to him earlier. Second down and eight. Jacobs down the line outside the Joe Jones. Jones around the corner. He's close to a first down. Knocked out by Johnny Krim. No sooner had we said the triple option and Jacobs, sore ankle and all, operates at you. They watch him go right down the line, but look at the top of your screen and watch Major Oakley, number 42, get a knockdown on Durson, number 23, which allowed Jones to spring into the secondary for the first down. And Major Oakley plays just as well without the ball as he does when he carries it. That is Alabama's first first down of the ball game. The ball is out at the 28-yard line. They hand it inside. And this time, the Alabama offensive front gets a good surge. Major Ogilvy gets big yardage. Picked up about six. Ole Miss out over Tennessee, 10-3 at halftime in the Southeastern Conference. And North Carolina 
beating Virginia. Carolina's had a fine season. Maryland, big over Clemson. Maryland's going to be in the postseason bowl, too, I think. Mark Nix is in. Major Ogilvy is out for the moment. Mark Nix is in at right halfback out of the wishbone. Fullback. Fullback is in the open. Billy Jackson. He's got another Alabama first down up at the 48-yard line. Brought down by Dave Burison, number 23. One thing that Dan Devine said, you could not allow the fullback to break up the middle. And the left guard and left tackle, which is Allison and McColls, make excellent blocks. 51, Radinsky cannot make the play. Jackson is an ideal fullback in the wishbone <clears throat> as he has great speed after he breaks into the secondary. Ogilvy back in at halfback now, replacing Nix. First down tied. They mark it at the 48. Jackson gained 14 on that carry. Got it again. He gets it to midfield and just across. And there, Mark Zavaknin, big sophomore from Evergreen Park, Illinois, brought him down, a linebacker for the Irish. Notre Dame has three very fine linebackers led by Bob Crable, the outstanding, possibly All-American, but two sophomores who have improved the entire season, Rudinsky and Zavaknin. Big, 230 pounds each of them. Good muscle. The Red Elephants come up. The ball at midfield. Second down. Eight. Jacob caught. Sack. Back at the 45. Coming in in a big hurry. Pat Kramer. He is a junior from Colton, Washington. Look at Notre Dame defense has not allowed a rushing touchdown in the last 20 quarters. In fact, they haven't allowed a touchdown in the last four football games, 16 quarters, since anyone has scored a touchdown. The ball is back just outside the 45 of Alabama. Third down at about 12. Jacob throws it back. He's got Ogilvy, goes the other way to Jones and overthrows him. He had Ogilvy on the right side, didn't see him. Ogilvy was in the clear and could have made a first down had uh, Jacobs been looking to the right, but his call was a screen throwback and he had no choice. He threw to the secondary receiver incomplete. And it's fourth down as Humphrey comes in. He's punted twice. He's averaged 38 and a half on the two punts. Hankard rushes him a little bit. It's not a particularly good kick. Prim seals it back at the 24. Nice run by John out for the 30-31. Tumbles out of bounds, stopping the clock at 38 seconds after a 30-yard putt. We have no score in Legion Field. Yeah, they have the end line up right behind. 38-6 remaining on the clock in the first quarter. The Fighting Irish have the football first down. They have put it at the 30. We have no score, and it's been so far just about what everybody expected it to be, with the defenses controlling the respective offenses. The message comes in from the sideline now as the Irish will go to work with Pete Buchanan bringing the play in from the coaching staff. Blair Keel started. He's in there at quarterback. Mike Corey and Keel split the time against Georgia Tech last week. Double tight end. Marty Detmer, 81. Nick Veer, 95. Different look this time for the Irish as they go strong side left. Now they bring Hollihan in motion. They give the ball off to the tailback, Phil Carter. Just bang. Power football straight ahead for four. Warren Lyles, nose guard, is very, is very fine football player. Was in on the plate. Chief, we've got regionals next week: NCAA football doubleheader, Ohio State versus Michigan, and USC versus UCLA. Nice. The second game will be a full national telecast. Ohio State, Michigan, of course, for the Big Ten championship. You look at Phil Carter as he just booms through there and he gets a first down for the Irish up to the 41. He's carried nine times now in the ball game already and he's picked up 29 yards and all of it's been pretty much in the middle. He did go outside one time and time has expired in the first quarter of play here in Birmingham. No score between the time and the yard. We go to quarter number two with nothing but zero showing on the scoreboard and a big big football game for both teams. The outcome of this one's going to affect a lot of people. Hollihan lines up in the backfield. Now they shift him out of there and put him in motion. 
and give the ball off to the tailback. And Bill Carter goes for the tenth time in the game, and he bangs in there for three. Here are the stats in the first quarter. Notre Dame has a slight edge in most of the categories. In fact, all of them, which is surprising since Alabama has dominated the statistics in their early games this year. Time of possession, 828 to 632, and good field position for Notre Dame, poor field position for Alabama. Second down and seven from the 44. Long count, probably checked off. Going to put it in the air. Whips it to Hunter sideline. Pattern incomplete. That is the fourth pass put in the air by Keel. He's one out of four for 10 yards. He's only completed 42% of his passes. Give him credit. He is a freshman, a very talented young man, strong arm. But freshmen, as well established back, do make mistakes. Third down, seven. Hunter, wide left. Deal on a roll. Gets it away. Pass is complete to Carter. Carter is caught by Wilcox. Brought down. But not until he has crossed midfield and reached the Alabama 47-yard line. That's another Notre Dame first down. That execution by Keel was similar to a senior. He rolled to his left and hit Carter on the same pass that he completed in the first quarter. A flat pass where the linebacker could not contain it, could not cover it. And so the Irish now moving again in Alabama territory at the 47 of the tide. We've got the three men lined up in the eye. This time they don't break them. They keep Bushka in there. Give the ball off to the fullback, Sweeney. And Sweeney moves it from the 47 down to about the 43. Now, this will tell you something about the, the just brute strength of Notre Dame. They're able to move three, four yards on those line plays. Those are games there reflected on your screen that are coming up in front of us, winding up December 6th with the Fighting Irish in Los Angeles against USC. It is second down for Notre Dame and six. Carter. That time EJ Jr. got it with help from Wilcox. So big EJ, number 39. Stuck his helmet into him and stopped him. E.J. Jr. has a way of making the big play when it's most needed. Coaches feel very secure with a young man on the defensive field. Third and five. Right. He looks. He's got Holohan. He hits him. And Holohan is out of bounds at the Alabama 29. And now the Irish have an impressive drive working for them. That was perfect execution by Keel. He faked the Carter, and the, Notre, the Alabama defense moved in to play Carter, and then the receiver jumped right out in the flat for the wide-open completion. Man down on the <clears throat> sidelines, being attended to there. And we've got time called on the field. So time called for Alabama as Thomas Boyd, linebacker, was shaken up on the sidelines, walking now back toward the bench for treatment with 12.37 to go in the first half. Notre Dame got something going right here. All right, time in for the Irish. First down at the Alabama 29. Robbie Jones, 97, replaces Boyd at the linebacking position for Alabama. Irish moving the ball smartly now. Bush got his man in motion. Hands the ball to the tailback. And Carter runs into E.J. Jr. And he gets a couple of yards. Wilcox coming up out of that strong safety position. Helps again on the play. Here's a look at E.J. One of the things that E.J. Jr. can do so well, he can take on the blocker. And you can see Bear blocking him. And now, once he recognizes the play, it's his job to release and move in and make the play. That's what makes him such a great player. And you can see at the proper time, he shucks the blocker, Beer, and makes the tackle on Carter. Second down, nine from the 28. Fullback, Sweeney. Sweeney to the 25. It'll be third down, six. 
Alabama has such is Harry Oliver. He's 16 out of 20 in field goals. His longest is 51. He's been a very prominent part of the success of Notre Dame, I'll tell you. Mm. Good percentages. Third and six. Heel on a roll. Getting some pressure. Down he goes. Big play. Takes Oliver out of field goal range. Gary De Niro and Tommy Wilcox. De Niro, 51. Watch the left side of your line. You'll see Wilcox is safe to number 15. It's a safety blitz bringing De Niro, number 51, who was untouched. He came clean and had a clear, clear shot at Keel to tackle him for the loss to take him right out of field goal range. Loss of 15 yards. Here's Keel to punt. Tries to hang it up. Knuckle balls it down towards the corner, and it's out of bounds. Bushka came down trying to accept it and didn't quite hold on to it. But once again, Alabama has terrible field position. That was a 33-yard punt. But don't be fooled by those numbers. It was very efficient. One thing that uh, Notre Dame has been able to do is make enough first downs to ensure field position. Here's college football tomorrow with Bill Fleming. Very good schedule. Notre Dame versus Alabama, Michigan, Purdue be a good program. USC Washington out on the West Coast. They're playing this afternoon. Huskers trying to win their way into the Rose Bowl from the six. Alabama's got to go. The fullback, Charlie Williams, number 38. Charlie's first appearance of the ball game, a sophomore from Bessemer, which is part of the general region known as Birmingham, just about 12 miles from here. Lenny Patrick is in the ball game for the first time, and Mark Nix returns. So the second unit is in. Bryant going to his second group back on his own six-yard line in a scoreless ball game. Second down, eight. That's Patrick. Lenny Patrick across the 10 to the 13. Dave Dewerson and John Krim, the defensive play for the Irish. Dan Devine's comment, Frank, before the game was that his defensive secondary people are going to have to play a prominent role in this ballgame. Against the wishbone, they must be making the tackles on the outside because they're using everybody inside to stop the fullback dive play. Third down, long three. Ball's loose. Irish have it. John Hanker, bottom of the stack, comes out with a football. And Alabama makes the mistake. That's why coaches worry, fuss, and threat over field position. Alabama's had 34 fumbles this year. Let's watch it again and see if we can tell what happened. It's an inside wide series. Jacob Nick struck it. Actually, he just bumped into the right halfback, Nick, number 48, and they dropped the ball on the exchange. Let's see it again. You can see he's going to fake to the fullback, and he's made a bad exchange to the halfback. And here's Notre Dame with a golden opportunity from the Alabama 13. First down for the Irish. Three men in the eye. And it's Carter. And Carter goes to the 10 for about three. One thing that Alabama is efficient in doing is after a sudden exchange, Keith, they can rise to the cage. And they have a great defensive unit, and they feel that they can stop anybody from crossing that goal line running with a football. They just believe that they can. Well, they are about to be tested on second down and eight. 40. Carter backs his way inside the five to the four. He's a yard away from the first down. It's an excellent run by Carter. He cut back against the grain, the right side of the Notre Dame line. It opened up a little bit of a crease, and you watch Carter come right back in behind the right guard in the block of 57, John Scully, the center. Finally, Wilcox, number 15, wrestles him to the ground. Third down and one for the first down from the Alabama four. Carter up the middle, and he got a whack that time, but he twists his way forward, and he, I think, has the first down. Boy, he is a determined kid. He really took a wallop from Randy Scott. I mean, they went jawbone to jawbone. Right. Mike Carter is an excellent inside runner because, as his coaches say, he's a slicer. 
is going to have a measurement for the first down. By slasher, it means he runs low and he turns and twists, and he gives the defensive men very little opportunity to get a head-on tackle. Well, it is that close. Fourth down and a couple of inches. Given this set of circumstances, Keith, I believe the Divine will go for it. I think so. His offensive line in height averages over 6'5 and weight over 260. 80,000 come roaring up on fourth and inches. Quarterback Keel appears to have it. That was a good play by Keel. The center was uncovered, and it is a first down. When the center is uncovered, well, that close to the goal line, the quarterback has a natural hole in front of him. John Scully is a fine offensive son. He could just follow him right through for the first down. First and goal to go, Notre Dame at the Alabama 2. They got four cracks at it. Allahan and Murphy. Carter. Didn't get there. He's down to the one, maybe closer than that. Wilcox, 15. Thomas Boyd back in the lineup as well. See, both these teams very prominent and very stingy about letting folks crump around across their goal line. Part of the deep man out of the eye. Fumble! Alabama's claiming it. Alabama man comes out with it. Alabama's got the football. Pete Williams, the referee, pointing upfield, and Warren Riles is carrying the ball, and Notre Dame wastes a glorious opportunity to score. from the one will have it and the quarterback Jacobs just rides it out on the offensive line surge and you've got the old folks in there for this series Ogilvy <laughs> Jackson Jones Keith, one thing that Alabama must consider is they have to make a first down otherwise Notre Dame will be right back right not threatening again so this is critical coaches say that this is the most critical part of the game that making a first down or this position of the field Establishing some field position. Second down and eight. Fumble! Notre Dame's got it back. Scott Zedek on the loose football. Alabama mishandles the ball. Keith, I cannot believe it. The quarterback, Don Jacobs, is riding and reading the defensive tackle. Watch his head. Watch his head. Look at the defensive tackle. Now when he turns back to try to find Jones the halfback the ball is laying on the ground for a Notre Dame recovery let's watch Scott Zedick coming from the weak side once he sees the ball he has a clear sailing to recover it Notre Dame break and another scoring opportunity first and goal to go the ball at the four Carter over the top to the two you cannot measure the two-yard gain by Carter in, in the distance because that was a great run going over the top and making the linebackers miss him enough to where he could pick up a couple of yards. Sweeney the fullback. Carter's carried the ball 17 times for 46 yards with 6.15 to go in the first half. Carter. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Bill <laughs> <Still> Carter. <laughs> 
Carter. The Irish big offensive line blocked down, and he flew. He takes got a good standoff with the Alabama defensive lineman, allowing Carter to go over the top, really untouched, where the linebackers are usually there to meet him. The Alabama linebackers were absent on that play. Condini holds, and the kick by Oliver. And Harry throws it. And 6-0-2 to go in the first half of play. They swap mistakes. Notre Dame cashes it in and leads 7-0. We'll kick off. Johnson hits it. Line drive. Picked up by Patrick. And Lenny Patrick cannot get to the outside. And once again, Alabama will take the football, and they have poor field position well back inside the 20 near the 17. And with that poor field position, they also have lost a little momentum. The touchdown had to take some of their sting out of the football team. They need to reestablish that, make something. They haven't done anything rushing to speak of. Walter Lewis is in at quarterback, freshman from Bruton, Alabama, six feet, 181. A load on this young man right here. Ken Coley is hurt, remember. Badly bruised hand, cannot hold on to the ball. And it's given away to Patrick. And Patrick up to about the 19, close to the 20. Lewis came in and started the second half against LSU last year. Someone was telling the story. He was just sitting over listening to Bear Bryant talk to the team, Keith. Bear walked over to him and said, son, you're going to start the second half. And he said, my arms froze, my legs tightened up for me. I couldn't breathe. He didn't know how he made it to the ball. <laughs> Second down and eight from the 19. Lewis down the line with it. Turns it upfield and runs it across the 20 to the 24. He got five yards. Stacy Torren, a freshman out of Indianapolis, made the tackle for the Irish. Auburn fighting back. That's an old grudge match between the Bulldogs and the Tigers. They've battled each other over the years. And Mississippi State hanging right in there. The team that beat Alabama 6-3. And Florida pulled it out against Kentucky. Nebraska rolling in the fourth quarter. Third down, Alabama needs two yards. Two and maybe a half. Outside, good pitch for the freshman. He's got Joe Jones out there, loose on the sidelines, and an Alabama first down. Run out of bounds at the 39 by John Krim. 15-yard pickup. What a perfect execution on the triple option down the line, unbalanced line, and makes the ball back, regardless of the ball. Now when 23, Dorson comes to make the play, he lays it out to Jones with a good touch, and Jones going to pick up 82 marks in the blocker, but uh, finally Krim brings it down. So Torrin brings it down, I'm sorry. And it's at the 39-yard line for a first down. So having put the freshman in the ball game, he's responded nobly. He's back to throw it. He throws deep downfield. It is incomplete, intended for Bart Kraut, the tight end, and he was wide open. Jesse Bendross was wide open. He had his choice of receivers, and he just threw it a little too long for Kraut. This is the fake of the wishbone. The tight end runs right by the safety man. Uh, Gibbons, number 27, over to the right, and the strong safety. Number 23, Durson, was trailing very badly. If the pass had been accurate, it would have been a touchdown. Yes, sir. It is second down and 10 for Alabama oh, from their own 39. They trail oh. 7 to nothing to the Irish with four and a half to go in the first half. Pop it off to Billy Jackson. Billy Jackson runs, uh, Lenny Patrick, excuse me, and he runs into Zedek and company. Rod Crable. You can see that Alabama's uh, field position has been poor. Very difficult in any offense against uh, even a mediocre football team, much less Notre Dame to start in that position and move the ball and have any scoring chances. But they have something going here. They've got some momentum. It's third down and six. Very critical situation. West Virginia 24 over Rutgers 15. Yale won the Ivy League championship beating Harvard. All right, let's see what Lewis does. He's going to get nailed with a too much time call, I suspect. Illegal delay against the red team, exceeding the 25-second count. That'll cost him five, and I'm sure Notre Dame probably is going to take it. 
Keith, you and I were talking about uh, Lewis. It may be the best passer of any of the quarterbacks, even though he is a freshman. And maybe that's what Bear was thinking about, getting someone in the ball game that can throw the ball against this Notre Dame defense that's crowding the run. He's got Patrick in there at fullback. He stands up and throws, and the pass is incomplete. Little hitch pattern out there for Ben Ross, and he could not come up with it. The pass was low. SMU is trailing Texas Tech 14 to nothing at halftime, and Arkansas is beating AM by 10. Paul Bryant facing the sidelines. Washington State literally still in the hunt for a spot in the Rose Bowl. Opry comes in on fourth down, hits a low line drive. It is fielded by Krim. And Krim is cut down and a penalty flag downfield, and I think he got a clip coming here. That was a 47 yard punt. But uh, Joe Rodzinski was downfield and trying to get to a man, and he missed him. And got a clip out of it. The clip against the white team. And so now the ball will be marched back toward the Irish goal line with 3.15 to play in the first half and the Irish lead team to play. And Alabama with Lewis at quarterback showing a little offensive spark for the first time. This is the worst field position of the day for the Fighting Irish. The ball marked inside the 10. Time of possession, Notre Dame's big edge there, 15.47 to 10.58. The two coaches watching the field as play begins with Peel ready to pull the trigger from the 10. Give it to Phil Carter, slips down right at the line of scrimmage. He was cutting back against the grain and had some daylight in the middle. His feet just went right out from under him. Uh, he would have been able to break in the second there. Notre Dame very, very much needs to make a first down so that they can possibly run out the clock but not give Alabama another chance with the football. Carter's now carried 19 times here in the first half. His 40 carries earlier this year, school record. Second down and 10. Carter again. Look at it. Well, oh, I tell you, he is a tough fellow. 193 pounds. He took three hits, stayed on his feet, got out across the 20, and he's picked up a Notre Dame first down. The coaches told me that when Carter returned to practice this week, it pepped up everybody, and this is a perfect illustration. Of course, it was a great blocking by the offensive line. There's Scully, number 57, making a key block, but watch the real important part of the run. Watch Carter just will not go down. And the Irish are operating from their own 21, leading 7-0 with Holohan in motion. And Carter's got it again. He's up to the 24 for three. Randy Scott coming in to take his feet from under him. But even though Randy took his feet from under him, he still was able to extend his body forward for a couple. He does that twisting. Carter's a twister and turner, slasher, does anything to makes a three-yard gain into a six and seven-yard gain as a rule. Second down seven from the 24. One quarter to play first half. Give it to the fullback. Couple of three maybe to the 27. I asked the Notre Dame coaches how much they would run the fullback in this ball game. They said just the rest part. That was all that they would give him the ball, just to give him a little rest. But Notre Dame does have a very fine alternate tailback in Jim Stone, who had four 100-yard rushing games in a row. A Notre Dame record. Third down, they need three. About three and a half. They go to the fullback. He's caught behind the line of scrimmage by Randy Scott, the linebacker. So Sweeney's not able to pick up the first down, and it brings up fourth and the punter onto the field for the Irish with 57 seconds to play in the first half. Time is called to stop the clock here by Alabama. Alabama has one timeout remaining. They should get pretty good field position after the Notre Dame punt. The Irish will punt. Major Ogilvy is deep for Alabama. Blair Keel, the quarterback, to hit it. There's Ogilvy. Looks like Alabama's coming. We've got eight of them up there. Now nine, now ten. They're coming. He gets it off. Ogilvy, low line drives. Got some daylight. Looking for a little help. 
Pops out of there. That's a fine senior running back who made a cool decision. And when it looked like he was trapped, he just showed great patience, took some punishment, and brought it back 15 yards. Keith, you described it perfectly. He's waiting for some blockers to come back because they had a, a block on and trying to tip the block. You can see he makes three or four people miss him, and finally, it takes three to bring him down after a 10-yard return. With Next 42 question. seconds to play in the first half, Alabama's ball first down at their own 45. Notre Dame leading seven to nothing. Ball loose. The quarterback hunting for it. Looked like there was a mix-up between the center and the quarterback. Walter Lewis covers it. Alabama keeps the ball. And next Saturday, we'll have regional coverage of Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma, Nebraska, plus one other game, followed by national coverage of USC and UCLA. The Trojans undefeated with a tie, like Notre Dame. Second down and 10 from the 45. And Walter Lewis back to throw. John Hankers after him misses it. Lewis is loose. He can fly. He needs to get out of bounds, and he does. The time has run out. The half is over. So Walter Lewis, a scrambling freshman, brings some offensive excitement finally to the Alabama attack as Paul Bryant heads for the clubhouse to have a visit with his football team. They trail in the ball game by a score of seven to nothing. And here is Bill Fleming now with Coach Dan Devine. Coach, I rather imagine you were glad there weren't 10 more seconds on the clock. But <laughs> oh, Bill, it's that kind of a game. That the tempo is hectic down here, and both teams are, are really going all out. It's a great tribute to college football. Our young men, uh, particularly our younger people, are just playing so well. And uh, so your defense and your offensive line have been spectacular. Well, Bill, the game's only half over, and Alabama's a very proud football team, and so are we. And I just uh, pray that our inexperience won't show up. It hasn't yet. And that's what we're going to work on at halftime is uh, playing our ball game. Don't get caught up in the excitement of the crowd. Uh, boy, I tell you, it's hectic down here. All right, Coach. I know you want to get into the locker room. Thanks for stopping by. All right, uh, Keith, and we'll be back here to see the second half of this game at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Let's go back to you. Let's have a look at the play here in which the young freshman Walter Lewis goes for 34 yards. You may be uh, a wild card piece of excitement before this day is done. Very definitely. You can see what we can expect in the second half as Lewis makes three or four people miss him. Then you can see the speed as he just outruns a couple of the Notre Dame defenders trying to get over to the boundary and get out of bounds for a possible field goal, which he does finally get out of bounds as 27 uh, Gibbons finally knocks him out, but the time had run out. Okay, 7 nothing Notre Dame. We'll be back with today's halftime activity. Kickoff, Coach, when we can, what can we look forward to here from the time? Well, I don't know, Bill. I think our defense has played very well. We just gave them too much. If the uh, defense can get the offense the ball and a duff, we might be winning the game. Yeah. And he is going with Walter Lewis to start the second half, Keith. Not surprising at all, because the youngster really showed a lot of poise and a lot of speed. That is very important in the whole complex offensive scheme of things for Alabama. Jim Stone and John Mosley are the deep end now for Notre Dame as Alabama will kick off to the Irish to start the second half of play. Tim Clark will kick it off. Seven to nothing ball game. Alabama has never beaten Notre Dame. The losses have been one point, two points, and three points. The first one engineered by Eric Parsegian, who incidentally is to be installed in the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame next month. And Eric, we are delighted for you, partner. Eric working earlier today with Al Michael in the Michigan Purdue game. We're ready. Clark hits it. Mosley is over in the corner. Almost stepped out of bounds. Oh, look at here. He was trying to turn that thing to the sidelines, and he hadn't slipped. He might have been able to do it. He gets out to about the 18-19. And we'll go in the second half. The team was offside on the kickoff. 
Irish moving ahead. As you heard Pete Williams, the referee, say, Alabama's got him back there on the 19. I think that Alabama would refuse this and start Notre Dame back on the 19. If he kicks it from the 45, he'll probably kick it out anyway. Penalty declined. It'll be first down. Okay, we'll go from the 19 for the Irish. And the offensive alignment will be Holohan at a flanker. Hunter at a split in. The quarterback will be Keel, Carter, a tailback, and Sweeney and Buchanan alternating a fullback. Chinarella, Scully, Thayer, Pozeric, Veer, the big guys up front. And here's the first play of the second half. They're over there at the Alabama Student Inn, and boy, they are really roaring. They give that football off to Carter. Carter from the 19 to the 22 for three. The defensive alignment for Alabama, Gary De Niro had a big, big play in the first half at defensive end. Byron Bragg's been playing very steady inside. Warren Lyles, of course, recovered the fumble for Alabama. Jackie Klein, the other tackle, big sophomore from McCullough, and E.J. Jr., who had a quarterback sack in the first half. Carter now has carried 22 times for 65 yards. It is second down seven from the 22. Carter outside number 47 reached up and just got a hold of his uh, shoe top to hold him down Byron Bragg there are the linebackers Randy Scott and Thomas Boyd Boyd's been uh, alternating with Robbie Jones Mike Clements a corner and Jeremiah Castile at the corner also returns kicks for them Tommy Wilcox who played very well in the first half for Alabama and Ricky Tucker the free safety it is a first down for the Irish up at the 30. They go to the fullback. Sweeney is hit by Boyd, number 90. Just as he got the ball. And Gary De Niro comes in to help put him away. One thing that uh, Thomas Boyd, number 90, does, he pursues so fast that he usually takes himself out of the play, but he diagnosed this reverse play very wisely and made the play. Outstanding by Thomas Boyd, number 90. He gained the half a yard, call it second down nine. Heel to throw, pressure's on, Junior's after him, pass away, deflected, intended for Hunter, knocked away by Castile. The numbers after the first half read this way. Well, look at the bottom right, you see the most critical number is two fumbles by Alabama, setting up the only touchdown. But I think what's revealing is that Notre Dame made first downs eight to four. Down again, they had uh, more offensive plays and led in time of possession, and that gave them good field position. It is third and long, third and nine plus. Shotgun. Heel might kick it. He's the punter. He might kick it. He does. He kicks it out of there. Nobody back for Alabama. They're just going to roll toward the sideline. Alabama's lucky. Alabama's lucky. That ball could have kept going toward the goal line and been put down inside the five, but it didn't work that way. It's a 44-yard kick. And the Alabama offensive unit with Lewis at quarterback, Jones over to Jackson Bendross as a wide receiver. Beasley, Allison, Mott, Cowell, McCombs, Trout down. The crowd comes up on the Alabama side for this first offensive possession with the Tide. And it might be a pretty good series here, a very important series, I guess is the way I should phrase it, for the Irish defense. Charlie Williams will open at fullback. And uh, the quarterback, Lewis, kept it. And from the 26, moved it out to the 29, with Durison making the tackle. And there's a look at Big John Hankard, who plays defensive end from Jackson, Michigan. Joe Gramke out of Cincinnati at the tackle. Pat Kramer, young man from the Pacific Northwest at tackle. And Scott Zedek, who had a big play in recovering the fumble. For the Irish, Zavagnan, the sophomore linebacker. Crable, the middle linebacker. And Joe Rudzinski, the right side linebacker. Ogilvy goes in motion on second down and seven. They give the ball up inside to Williams. And Charlie Williams, a sophomore out of Bessemer, has got three up to the 32. The secondary men, Stacy Torren, a freshman out of Indianapolis, he's 6'4", big guys back there. John Krim also has good size at the corner. Dave Durison stands above six feet, close to 200. And Tom Gibbons, the free safety. 
It is third and four for the tie from their 32. Lewis going to throw it. Throws it short. Jones got it. Jones got the first down and then some. There's a new wrinkle. Hadn't seen that one out of Alabama. And it's up to the 46-yard line to pick up a 14 yards, and Vince Cowell made a big block on the play. Number 67, Cowell was the key man to bring Jones in the second there, but here's a typical Bear Bryant maneuver to give Lewis, the freshman, some confidence, let him throw a short screen pass, and a big first down for Alabama. Lewis gives it to his fullback, and Williams booms to the 50 for four. You can see the pace of the Alabama football team pick up to that last completed yep. pass. They have break the last play. They broke out of that huddle. They sprint to the, sprinted the line of scrimmage. Got a good takeoff and made five yards right through the left guard and left tackle area. They stick it in the end zone here, Frank. You've got a different ball game, don't you? Yes, you do. And this young man, Lewis, is excited. Freshman quarterback. Trout flexes out. Marks is in at a wide receiver. Here's the option with Jones carrying. Gets a block from Major Ogilvy. Dives it across the 45 of Notre Dame. Down inside the 44. It's going to be a first down for Alabama. One, one thing that you have to do in the wishbone when you don't have the football, you have to be a blocker. Major Ogilvy made a fine block on Dave Durson, number 23, the strong safety. Came close to springing Jones for even more yardage. Jones leaves. Patrick comes in at the halfback position. Ben Dross is back in at the wide receiver. Jones has 32 yards, as you saw. First down for Alabama. Ball goes off inside to the fullback, and it moves for four yards down to the 40. That looks more like the first down surge of the wishbone offense. You have to establish the uh, fullback up the middle to begin with. Now, here's the, the running backs, as you can see, for, for Alabama and is spread about where about 10 carries by Jackson in the ball in the ball game so far is most number of attempts. Second down, seven. Charlie Williams, the fullback. Alabama first down at the Irish 27. He just stomped on people that time. He's going to break the tackle. The fullbacks. They don't look for daylight. They make their own daylight. You're going to see Grable, number 43, misses him. Grable was in position, but Williams just cuts right back and makes a 10-yard game. I would say, Keith, that watch Grable. You'd see him miss the big ball back again. But one thing that when the wishbone team starts making yardage up the middle, watch out. Everything starts happening. Timeout is called by Alabama. They have two left. Fullback Scott McCray has come in. Billy Jackson has not played since the first quarter at fullback, so apparently there are injury troubles there for Alabama. But McCray is in. He's a 200-pound freshman. It's first down Alabama. The ball is at the Notre Dame 27. Irish leading 7 to nothing, and Lewis was just smothered by Stacy Torren before he had a chance to deliver the pitch out. Now you realize what could have happened there if he had released the ball, he'd have given it. To Torrance. Watch on the right of your screen. It's a cornerback fire, which is something you try to confuse an inexperienced quarterback. And look at Lewis Keith. Did you see him hold the ball and bring yep. it back with one hand? I'd like to see the size of that right hand <laughs> to hold the ball and bring it back because he had it halfway gone. He lost three yards. It's outside the 30. Second down and 13. Lenny Patrick goes in motion. Come on, and the quarterback, Lewis, runs it up the middle, runs through Crable again, and gets it back to the original line of scrimmage and just blows his way through the middle there and turns a, in a pretty good size piece of yardage. Well, he had a breakdown with the exchange from the center. He was juggling the ball, and very wisely, instead of pitching it back for a loss or a fumble, he just went right up the middle and made six yards. There's Charlie Williams. You can see they've taken the pads off. It looks like it's a shoulder. He wants to play. Here's Lewis, the quarterback, trying to turn it upfield, and he gets it to the 21. And there he's going to stop, and it's going to bring up fourth down 
And that's what Charlie Williams was hollering about. I'm on the field goal team. Well, you can't play like that, Charlie. Well, that's what coaches do. If you get hurt and you're on a kicking team, you've got to go and tell the coach, hey, I'm not going in. And one coach is responsible for that. Otherwise, you can move out to the field with 10 men and have to use the timeout to get it straightened out. Here is a 37-yard attempt from Peter Kim, young man born in Korea, came here from Hawaii. From this distance, he is five for five. He missed it to the right. So Kim misses from 37 yards. And it's 7.43 to go in the third quarter. Notre Dame still leads seven to nothing. Ford reflects the story. Alabama had the football five minutes and 16 seconds, ran 10 plays and came away empty. As Kim missed from 37 yards on the field goal try, here comes Notre Dame. First down from the 21. Alabama student section is really roaring, but the Irish go ahead and run the play. Pitch it to Phil Carter, and Carter turns the corner. And he turns it with authority out to the 27. ABC's presentation of NFL Monday Night Football, Oakland and Seattle in Seattle, and the Seahawks are just an incredible story in that they have not been able to win a game this season on their home floor. Keith, the Oakland Raiders lead all teams playing on Monday night with an incredible 14 wins, yes, one loss, right. and one tie. And then a special Thursday edition with San Diego and Miami. And Miami has become a story again. Second down and four. Bushka in motion. Give it to the fullback. And Buchanan runs it up the middle. He's got a first down for the Irish. Notre Dame muscling its way out to better field position to a first down at the 32. Georgia has won the Southeastern Conference Championship, beating Auburn 31 to 21. They have a game remaining with Georgia Tech, but they've locked the spot in the Sugar Bowl, and every reason to believe they will be playing the winner of this game right here in Birmingham on New Year's Day. And it'll be a good one, no matter who wins this one. Washington continuing to lead Southern California 3 to nothing, and the Huskies are trying to lock up the Rose Bowl spot in L.A. against the Trojans. Here's Carter. Carter caught by Boyd. Watch Thomas Boyd, number 90, recognize the play, and he blitzes through the seam and wrestles Carter down for a three-yard loss. But just a sensational play. What speed and quickness. Thomas Boyd, number 90, Alabama linebacker. Just a great play. 6'3", 212-pound junior from Huntsville. Second down, 13 from the 30. Keel, quarterback draw. Pretty good yardage. Gets it up across the 37. Nebraska won today and will play Oklahoma next week at Lincoln. There'll be regional coverage here on ABC of that ball game. Oklahoma was a winner today. Ohio State was a winner today. They play Michigan next week in Columbus. There'll be regional coverage of that ball game here on ABC. Rose Bowl on the line for that one. Tip one big. They're headed for a showdown against Penn State. November 28th. You'll see that on ABC. It's third down, five. Jim Stone. Nope, Tommy Wilcox. Wilcox had penetrated from his strong safety position, and he was right there with Randy Stuck. Alabama has, in this quarter, been keeping their safeties and cornerbacks up on the line of scrimmage, knowing that Notre Dame is not likely to throw the ball, and Wilcox was right on the spot to tackle Carter for the no game. Blair Keel in the punt, just under 40 yard average on his five kicks so far. Alabama peels off to return it, and Keel hits a beauty, forcing fair catch call by Major Ogilvy. And Ogilvy has it back around the 20. 41 yard punt. There's the story on what Oklahoma did today. So they'll be going into Lincoln with a full head of steam. And Mississippi State bowl hungry. They're hoping they'd have a chance at the Southeastern, the chair of the Southeastern Championship. But a roll big over LSU. And Ole Miss won one today. Steve Sloan and his folks. Miami beat Vanderbilt. Commodore has played them tough. Trying to finish off Virginia. Maryland beat uh, Clemson. It is first down from the 21. Lewis, the freshman quarterback, hands to his fullback, Scott McCray, also a freshman, and with Lenny Patrick in the backfield, there are three freshmen handling the ball. Mark Nix is a junior. He's number 48 in place of Ogilvy right now. Bill Bear Bryant, he's going to be playing Notre Dame 
for a possible big bowl bid or national championship with three freshmen in the backfield. He said no way he's getting that position. That's unfortunate. Second down and nine from the 22. Lewis gives it off to McCray again, and McCray is thrown back. Crable, Zedek. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. A lot of things going on here in Birmingham these days. This big ball game with an official crowd of 78,873. They've got the 1984 PGA Golf Championship coming up in Shoal Creek. One of the great courses in the country. Here's Lewis back to throw. Has time. Throws a bullet. Knocked down. Urison had his hands on it. And he's stomping around because he didn't intercept it. it an excellent play by Durson. He was lined up on the line of scrimmage. He got a good read of the pass and dropped back and covered the out pattern from underneath. And he, as you said, Keith, he nearly intercepted it. And so the Irish defense wants Alabama's offensive effort. And Humphrey is in the punt for the tide. The snap is good. The kick is away. And it takes an Alabama bounce. Goes right on down the sideline like a hat eyes and rolls out just inside the 30. That's a 45 yarder by Woody Humphrey with 328 to play in quarter number three. And it's still Notre Dame seven and Alabama nothing. Well, for the first time today, we we're able to give you a picture from the Goodyear blimp. America out of Houston with Captain Don McDuff, cameraman Charlie Mitchell, and the video technician Lee Burton. It's been so overcast, haven't been able to penetrate it. There he is, blowing in the night. At its first down, Notre Dame, ball just inside the 30. Blair Key on a rollout. He's going to have to pull it down and run it. And he drops at the 36. Ricky Tucker came up from a cornerback position. Signs hanging around, and people from everywhere, I think all over the world, here at this ball game today. Kenai, Alaska is represented over here. You've got Bridgeport, uh, Pennsylvania, with the, the uh, Alabama faithful flew up there coming. Dave Capaletti passed through before the ball game today. He's come in from Frankfurt, West Germany. <laughs> a lot of people. Incidentally, they're watching us live. Many of our armed forces in the European region of the world today. Hope you guys and gals are enjoying the ball game. Bill Carter takes a solid whack from Robbie Jones, young linebacker, sophomore, from Demopolis, Alabama, at 2.35 to play in the third quarter. Third down and two for the Irish. They go to Carter. And he is not going to get that first down. Jim Bob Harris came firing through number nine like a runaway tank, and he just took the wheels off his wagon. Alabama was lined up in an 11-man line. Harris is the free safety, and he made the tackle at the line of scrimmage on a sensational play. Tackling Carter, which was not an easy play. He had to leave his feet and knock Carter down for no gain and force the punt. He'll be. Ogilvitz will return it. Not too much on it. Takes an Alabama bounce, kicks to the sidelines, touches the Notre Dame man, it's dead right there. Mike Bushka had the ball bounce into his leg, the ball whistled right there, and it's Alabama. First down at the 33, that was a 30-yard punt. One thing we want to, I want to mention is the Alabama defense, I think, has played sensational football. Both teams have, really. Yes, both, it's been a defensive-dominated football game, as we predicted, because neither team has had much success throwing the ball. Alabama's completed four passes, average per game. Notre Dame only eight. Ben Orcutt now is in the lineup at a running back for Alabama. All Bryant shuffling his cards, trying to find something. Goes deep, way downfield, Ben Gross. He had a step on Krim, and the ball was thrown too long. One thing that when you're defending the wishbone, you know that sooner or later that wide receiver is going to come down and Take the block and go deep, and then throws is in behind Krim, number 19, at the pass. Once again, this is the second pass. The young freshman quarterback, Walter Lewis, has overthrown a receiver when he was wide open for a touchdown. Mark Kraut was the other one to tight end. And he was so open, he was lonesome. Alabama, two out of nine to 15 yards in his passing today. Up 
the middle. Goes Lenny Patrick. And Patrick blows it for a first down for Alabama at the Notre Dame 43. 24 yards. He's been working at fullback. He's not very big. He only weighs 170 pounds. But look at the hole that the offensive line opened up. And Patrick has more speed than any Alabama back. And you can see that he broke in the second there. He didn't veer from north and south. Made a big first down. Go right back to it. And he gets a couple of yards. Four running backs they have to go out there and run like Patrick did. Now he comes right back in the huddle, wheezing and out of breath, and they call your number again. Well, most of the time they're reading deep, and whatever the defense dictates is who's going to carry the ball in the triple up. Less than a minute to play in the third quarter, second down and eight. Lewis keeping. And Lewis surges down to about the 37. There's John Morrow, number 84, from South Bend, Indiana, two blocks from the Notre Dame campus, came all the way down to play for Alabama. Bear Bryant can recruit them from anywhere. Third down and four. I think he wants to win that football, this football game, Keith, and go back home. They got him spread out. Lewis gives it away, though, and it doesn't work for much. Down to the 35, and that's going to bring up fourth down in a yard and a half. Normally. And the time is gone in quarter number three. Still 7-0. We'll continue after this message and the word from our local station. It is fourth down and two for Alabama. Woody Humphrey is in the punter. Standing back at midfield. Notre Dame doesn't really believe him. He comes up now, goes into the quarterback position. Notre Dame's got a six-man front. They pitch the ball to Joe Jones. Got to have two yards, won't get it. Crable made the play for the Irish. Notre Dame picks over the ball. Alabama gambles and it blows up in their face. We got a penalty flag in the melee. And it's apparently on the Irish as the Alabama team reacts to it. Keep, it must be a face mask or piling on one or the other, but give Bob Crable credit. He was alert, ready for the play, and moved over and made the play on Jones. Well, let's see. Here's Pete Williams. I have a dead ball, personal foul against the white team after the run ended. The white team's ball, it'll be first down and 25. Okay. Dead ball foul, big difference. Big difference. First and 25 with Notre Dame not being able to throw the football. Let's watch the play again. Humphrey is the kicker. He moves up the quarterback. He's going to pitch the ball and run the sweep. But Hank at number 47 got some penetration, but there's the man, Bob Crable, the middle linebacker, was not fooled, and he wrestled him down to the ground, getting help from others on the Notre Dame team. Notre Dame sitting in there with a seven-man front. I'm sure they expected something unusual from the Bear. First and 25, a dead ball foul. If it had been a face mask, it would have been Alabama's ball to keep. But Notre Dame has the ball. And Bill Carter, number 22, the 193-pound sophomore out of Tacoma, Washington, is brought down by Thomas Boyd and Warren Lyle. Next Saturday, that's what you'll see, plus one other game, which will be announced later. Those earlier games will be regional telecasts. The USC-UCLA game will be a national telecast. Some conference championships and Rose Bowl and, and bowl games, depending on those ball games. Yep. Second down. At about 23. Heel puts it up. No interference. Now the man comes up from way back here and calls. The back judge comes up and calls interference. Holohan was coming down. Castillo was there. One of the linesmen came down and waved it off incomplete. The back judge came all the way up the field and threw the flag. Here's Pete. Pass interference. 
It's the red team. It'll be first down and ten. Well, I'm going to say it. I'm not one to criticize the fellows who are official ball games, but I thought that was a pretty picky call. Well, let's look at it again. The rule says that if two, actually, Castillo pumps into Houlihan, but the rule says if they are not, there's no intent to impede uh, the receiver, it's not a penalty. There'll be argument over that for a long time. Yeah, first down, the ball for Notre Dame at the 48. Give the ball off inside the Buchanan. And Pete Hammer's in there for good yardage, down to about the Alabama 46. Alabama defense is going to be tested right here. The break that gave Notre Dame a first down after having first and 25 can be demoralized. Here are the third quarter statistics, and you can see the big thing about the ball game. Yards passing, 32 for Notre Dame, 15 for Alabama. Defenses are dominated. Second down and five for the Irish. Quarterback draw with Keel. And he's down to the 41, and that'll be another Notre Dame first down. That little play has worked for them very well today. Baylor has locked the Cotton Bowl spot. Baylor winning the Southwest Conference Championship with a win today, and Kansas had a big day against Colorado. It's a team, apparently, for the future, too, what with all the freshmen they have. You see Washington State winning big and Oregon winning big at halftime out on the West Coast. Fourth quarter. Iris with the ball. They lead 7 0 and controlling the ball game right now. On first down, it goes to Carter. And De Niro, 51, wraps him up with help from Jeremiah Castile. There's some intensity by both teams right now. The Alabama football team, they are a proud group, as everyone knows. Their defense uh, believe in themselves, and they are just hustling and doing their very best to stop this Notre Dame. Football team. Carter out, Stone in, tailback for the Irish. Pete Holohan's run about seven miles today. Handed off inside to the up man, the fullback. And Pete Buchanan has a, across the 35 to the 34. And Notre Dame now will be looking at third down and three. Notre Dame has been using the two tight end offense, which gives them additional blocking. Plus, it squares up the Alabama defense, forcing them to eliminate some of their stunts. Irish have called timeout. They have two remaining, 12-18, to play in the football game. There's the Irish sideline. The seven-point lead. They have the ball. Third down, three at the Alabama 34. Teal wants to throw, throws a quick hitch to Hunter. Hunter catches the ball, and he's got a first down at the Alabama 29. So a bang-bang play. Blair Teal hits Tony Hunter. Teal now four out of nine, 36, and the Irish keep the ball. Tony Hunter is one of the most gifted athletes in the country. He's 6'5", and plays wide receiver. He's missed the last two ball games. It's a little quick out. He knows he's going to break out just enough to get the first down. Even though he's knocked back, the forward progress gave him the first down. At the Alabama 29, first catch of the day for Tony. Steele <laughs> puts it in the air again to Hunter and knee down. Knee is down. We get a little shoving knife on the sidelines, but that's quickly stopped. One thing we should mention that Harry Oliver, the place kicker for Notre Dame, has kicked 16 out of uh, what, 20, 20, 75 percent, and they are within his range right now. Ball is just short of a 23. Second down and about five. They go to Jim Stone, the tailback. And a penalty flag thrown by the field judge as he runs into the stack at the 19-18 yard line of Alabama. Going to go against the tide currently. Alabama defensive people got to be getting a little tired. They've been out there a long time. They have a grabbing of the face mask by the red team. Mm. 
And that's two penalties that have really, really hurt the Alabama cause. That call, however, was made by an SEC man. Well, we see Harry Oliver. As I said earlier, he's six, 16 out of 20 field goals so far this year. The football is sitting inside the Alabama 10. Call it the Tide 9. It is first down and goal to go for the Fighting Irish. Six-man front defensively for Alabama. Heel gives it the fullback. Irish use the muscle and get it to the six. That's John Sweeney carrying the ball. The twisting and turning by Sweeney and falling forward could be critical by the time fourth down comes around. He was hit at the line of scrimmage, but twisted and fell for a three and a half yard gain. Second down goal from the six. It's Buchanan to the two. Running right. Notre Dame is running right over John Scully, the only senior in the offensive line. Three sophomores and one junior comprise the offensive line that have played exceptionally good football today. Those are two big pullbacks that they're alternating to. Sweeney is 225. Buchanan is 220. They're both sophomores. It's third and goal to go from the two. Into the stack. Goes the tailback. And maybe the one. Maybe the one. Alabama, I think, over the years has played the best goal line defense of any team in America. We saw it in the Sugar Bowl game against Penn State. Won the ball game for him. Now they're going to try a field goal with Harry Oliver, number three. Well, Carter just had no place to go that time. No, the linebackers filled the area above the line and prevented him from diving over. 18-yard attempt for Harry Oliver. And time called Notre Dame has to use a timeout. Little mix-up in the substitution for the field goal unit. 8.54 to play in the ball game. We'll be back for the kick. We come back live into Legion Field in Birmingham, and Harry Oliver about to try an 18-yard field goal. That'll make it 10-0 if he is successful. And that's 10 big points with 8.54 to play in the game, and Alabama so far relatively incapable of using the forward pass, and now Alabama calls a timeout. They want to let Oliver simmer a little. Let him think about it a little bit. All right, while we're going to spend this time out, let's spend some time with Bill Fleming and talk about bowl games. All right, Keith, uh, the deadline is really five minutes from now, Eastern time, but uh, also part of the rule is that if the game has concluded, then it can be announced. So, Georgia has won its game, as you know, against Auburn, will be in the Sugar Bowl against the winner of this game. It looks right now like Notre Dame might be there in the Orange Bowl, Oklahoma or Nebraska. They'll play next week. You'll see it on ABC. And We've got four teams that could possibly be in there against them. In the Rose Bowl, either Ohio State or Michigan against the Pac-10 champion, and Washington is now tied with USC 3-3. Three three. And in the Cotton Bowl, Baylor, which has clinched the Southwest Conference Championship, will be the host in the Cotton Bowl, either against Notre Dame or Alabama. In the Liberty Bowl, this is definite. Uh, both teams have uh, accepted the bid because their games are concluded. Missouri, loser today to Oklahoma and Purdue, losing to Michigan, the third place team in both conferences. Keith? All right, our congratulations to Grant Taft and his Baylor Bears for winning the Southwest Conference Championship. Good little football team out there. Tough, determined bunch of kids. Here's the kick now by Oliver. An 18-yarder and the crowd roaring and a long count and They'll take the penalty, and, and by doing this, he's going to better himself. He reduces the imperfection of angle here. He backs him up five, and he'll have a much better shot at it. Keith, he could not call timeout again because he could not call two timeouts back-to-back. Uh, -back. They would have made him play. And so Alabama may 
I don't know. They're trying to refuse it, but I don't believe you can on the lay of the game. Yes, they are. Of an illegal delay against the white team, penalty is declined. Second decline. Yep. So all of that for naught, and we'll go back to uh, square one here. Harry, kick it. A little strategy by both coaches. <laughs> this this 18-yard uh, field goal is going to be a legend here in a minute, especially if it turns out to be the ultimate difference in the ball game. Convini puts it down. Block! E.J. Jr. blocks it. Jay Jr. coming from the right side. He broke inside of the up back and he gets his left hand on the ball and blocks it. What an effort by the senior two-time all Southeastern Conference defensive end. Byron Bragg shaken up on the play but now trotting off the field slowly. And here's Alabama with 848 to play in the ball game. And Lewis is a quarterback. And he's back to throw. And he shoots it to the sidelines. And the pass is caught. Bendross makes the sliding catch at the 29. Another look at the field goal try. Let, let's watch Oliver when he's left footed, when he puts his right foot down. Remember it rained last night. Let's see if his right foot doesn't slip. Yes, he slides and he misses the ball. Miss hits the ball and Junior gets the block. That is first down for Alabama up at the 29. Lewis keeps it, turns it, and spins it to the 31. Brought down by Stacy Torrin. Block is running. Time is now on the side of the Irish. I believe Alabama will try to open up a little more passing on the one-on-one -on -one coverage that Notre Dame is using on the flanker. Right now, Notre Dame really is set up in a 5-4 defense. And I don't think you're really going to run very far against that kind of a defensive line. Well, they're pitching the defensive tackles inside to stop the fullback. The runs that the fullback has made has been breaking outside of the tackle and going inside of the defensive end. Football is at the 32. Third down and seven. Third down and seven. Didn't work enough. Now they got to make a tough decision. Well, Keith, if it's more than a yard, I would expect he would kick it. His defense is just played outstanding Alabama's defense has played outstanding football and they'll get another shot at it and of course there's always a possibility of a fumble the city's play is to kick it fourth and two Humphrey sets up the quarterback now he drops back to punt Irish sent two people deep Woody gets it off and it's a dandy Durison has to wait and wait and wait and wait the red shirts are after him and they've got him back on the 21 it was a 46-yard kick by Woody Humphrey. You've got six and a half minutes to play in the football game. Notre Dame leads by a touchdown, and now it's up to the Bama defense. Six and a half minutes to play in the football game. The winner goes to the Sugar Bowl against Georgia with a chance, with a chance, uh, at least uh, an opportunity to play for and a chance to even win the national championship. Remember, USC is sanctioned out of the Rose Bowl. They cannot play in a postseason game. It is first down, Irish, at their 21. If they can control the ball for a couple of three first downs, well, they might just run out that clock. The play is good for four. John Sweeney, the big fullback, carrying it. Sweeney and Buchanan. Sweeney 33, Buchanan 35. And they've been doing a lot of the hammer work here in the late going. And running right behind John Scully, the senior offensive center, 6'4", 255 pounds. They go to the 
tailback Carter. He's smothered. Right at the 25. Randy Scott led the tacklers for Alabama. Now Alabama must decide if they're going to put the blitz on and try to rush the passer. Let's watch Scott. Randy Scott, number 50, the all-purpose linebacker, calls the defensive signals. Second leading tackler. He comes in and assists Jackie Klein, number 91, and other tied players in the tackle. Third down and six. They go to Phil Carter, penalty flag. Carter is swarmed on back of the line of scrimmage. The flanker flipped or blocked below the waist going in. It's going to be a tough decision for Alabama. 15-yard penalty and third down or fourth down. The clip gets the white team. Well, it won't be a full 15 from where they are. No, it'll be 12 and a half yards or the ball. Alabama's got to make the decision. Boy, that is difficult. Half the coaches are saying, move them back. The other half is saying, no, kick it. But I believe they're going to move them back. The coaches are saying, move them back for field position purposes. I think that's a, under the circumstances might be the play. As the bear. I think he wants them to accept it. And yes. they're going to. Move them back to the 10. Make them handle the ball on third down. There's always a possibility of another loss or a fumble. Houlihan, number 31. The flip is the white team. Still third down. Houlihan was coming in motion. Number 31. Let's watch him clip. Probably the defensive linebacker, number 50, Randy Scott, blocks him from behind and below the waist. All right, Field shifts back into front formation on third down. The Irish are going to kick it out. Jim Bob Harris retreats for Alabama. He's going to kick it. And he hits it out there pretty well. Harris takes it back at the 44. And Jim Bob from Athens, Georgia, runs it back to the Notre Dame 46. And now the burden falls to the Irish defense, which has been terrific today. That was a 44-yard punt under pressure by Keel. And Keel is just the freshman who has played quarterback and done the putting. He's been a very busy young man. But everything for Alabama hinges right here on this series. 449 left to play. Fourth quarter, trailing by seven points. And... Three freshmen in the lineup. First the down at the Irish 46. 4.49 to play. Lewis will throw. He throws for Ben Drop. He throws it too low. Incomplete. 4.44 to play in the ball game now. As I said, not more than two minutes ago, the winner goes to the Sugar Bowl against Georgia. Georgia is the only team in the upper category of college football with a perfect record. They still have Georgia Tech to play. The winner of this game, then, will have a chance to play that team in the Sugar Bowl. Second down and 10. Lewis down the line. Goes outside with it to Joe Jones. Jones gets some blocking help, but not enough. As Bob Crable comes thundering across and takes him out of bounds. Just a sensational play by Crable, but also a good play by the safety, Dave Durson, who took on the block by Major Ogilvy, did not get knocked down and forced the play back into Grable. Number 43 keeps his feet free and comes all the way over and makes the tackle at the boundary. That is some kind of speed. Third down and 10 for Alabama. They have not been able to throw the ball with any efficiency at all today. Lewis has got to put it up. He goes to Bart Kraut. Kraut can't get the first down. He's got about nine, but Dursen and Krim double-team him and bring the big tight end down. Let's see where they mark him. Fourth they down. mark him at the 37. He, under these circumstances, he's got to go for it because only 3.45 left to play. One timeout left. He couldn't stop Notre Dame from running the clock out because he's still on timeout. Fourth and a yard and a half. Well, let's see how far they advance him. I don't think he made it. The spot by Lenny Patrick was hit by Crable and Zavagnan, and it looks to me like the spot is short. Very definitely. This is where Alabama's missing their two big fullbacks. Yep. 
that have been injured in the first half. Jackson, the very fine leading ball carrier, and Williams, his substitute. The officials will remove all doubt from the circumstances. They will bring the chains across the field. The field judge has been standing right there with his foot on the spot. They put the ball there now. And I think you'll see Notre Dame get it. That defensive punch from South Bend have played nobly today. Just been really bad. 326 to play in the ball game. The Irish have the ball in a 7-0 lead. Region Field in Birmingham with its 78,873 and about 120 media people and uh, assorted other folks, probably a total crowd beyond 80,000. Goodyear Blimp America offering the picture to you as Notre Dame now with 326 to play has the ball first down at their own 36. Alabama under Paul Bryant's never beaten Notre Dame. They go to the tailback Jim Stone. Stone is swarmed on after he gets to the line of scrimmage and Thomas Boyd with you right there. Watch Thomas Boyd go over the block of the fullback just ignoring the isolation block by the fullback and making the play. You're going to see the fullback dive at his feet right there, but he's going to go over him, ignoring the big fullback that weighs 225 pounds, and makes the play on Stone. And it's second down and 10. Fullback has it, and he gets two yards on the carry, and the clock goes at 2 4 5. Randy Scott put the hit on him. Remember, timeouts are so precious now. One by each team. Alabama only has one timeout. Last time Alabama was shut out, Georgia did it 21 to nothing, 1976. Third down and eight. Hello. Hello. Oh, do it. Heel gives the ball to Stone. Stone is in the hands of Scott. He's down. And now it is fourth. And Alabama gets the ball one more time at 2.06 to play. And, of course, if they should score, I wouldn't think they would go for the tie, would you, Keith? I think they'd go for two. Oh, I think they would, too. Yeah. Alabama has spent its last time out now. They have no more. I don't think that Alabama would want to tie at this time. I don't think so. The speculation was that uh, the loser goes to the Cotton Bowl. The winner would go to the Sugar Bowl if you wound up with a tie. Who do then you Notre Dame would still be undefeated. They'd have two ties, but not a loss. That would still make them, it would seem to me, a very attractive opponent for an undefeated, untied Georgia team. But Alabama ranks above. Notre Dame They're in the fifth, and the Irish are sixth. So it would be a tough decision by the Sugar Bowl committee. That's what we have for you next Saturday. We'll announce the other game, but the regionals come early. Ohio State, Michigan, Rose Bowl there, Big Ten Championship, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Big A Championship, Orange Bowl, the other game. Then USC, UCLA, both ineligible for postseason play. They are not on probation. Mind you, they have been sanctioned by their own conference. I think we're going to see a block attempt by Alabama. And the risk when you try to block is roughing the kicker. That's what they have to avoid at all costs. Sending 10. Heel gets it off, and he hit a beauty. Major Ogilvy goes all the way back and then decides to let it go, and it just barely trickles into the end zone. Oh, oh. he almost killed that thing down inside the five-yard line. 62-yard punt. Uh, the young freshman, quarterback, all-around football player. Dave will have all the scores and stories for you to wind up the day. And what a day it's been. Woo. 157 to play in the game. Alabama with no timeouts remaining. Have the football first down at their own 20. Notre Dame came into the ball game today with an average of 267 on the ground. Alabama's defense has held them to 145. They were a man short. Trout comes in now to line up a tight end. And that gives him 11. And here's Lewis back to throw. Gets away from Zedek. And uh, he's tripped up. Reaching in to grab him was Pat Kramer. 98. 
Carter have, and Lewis had some room to, to go if he had been able to get his engine running. Kramer grabbed him by the ankle. Hurry up now by Alabama, 135 to play in the game. Second down and six from the 24. Throw it to the sidelines and throw it into the crowd. That'll stop the clock. One thing that the wishbone teams lack is a two-minute offense. They are primarily a running football team, and they work very little on what we call the two-minute offense. So no, Alabama's going to have to be very lucky and get something, uh, maybe a short pass, Keith, and then run for the long distance that they're going to get back in the ball game. James Mallard, the track man, world-class sprinter, is in the lineup. You know what he's there for, all third and long. A dump it off to the tight end, Kraut. Kraut wedges and shoves his way across the 30 to get a first down at the 31. The clock stops while the chains are moved at 124. And Mallard was on a fly, headed as far as he could run. And Don Jacobs comes back into the lineup, replacing Walter Lewis. We've not seen Jacobs since the first quarter. Lewis leads the game. They've got to have the senior experience in there with a man who can throw it the best and make the best decision. Clock rolling at 105. Oh, was he set a second? No. No. The Alabama man was not set a second. They had movement. They shift in the backfield was Major Ogilvy, and he didn't take his sufficient set. It's a mistake. It'll be an illegal procedure call against Alabama. Another thing that is difficult for Alabama is pass protection on situations where you have to throw the ball. They are primarily a play-action pass team to use on running situations. When they're behind, it's very difficult, and the quarterback, Jacobs, is not likely to get more than one quick look. Jacobs is gone. Lewis has come back now. It's an illegal motion against the red team. Decline. Second down. Alabama having their penalty declined by... The Irish gives them second down. The ball is at 31. Mallard is still in the lineup for Alabama. The speedster, top of the screen. 59 seconds to play. Lewis hit by Hankard, and they've got him. Zedek puts him down. It was John Hankard, the defensive end, that made the play for the Irish. A loss of a yard, and the clock is running now, and Alabama can't stop it. Hankard was not blocked, Steve. He came free. Some Everybody missed the assignment. He had a straight shot at quarterback Lewis. 33 seconds. Lewis whips a little short pass. That is good for about eight yards to crowd the tight end. And you've got 20 seconds to play. Right there. Fourth down and two from the 38. is loose they fumble the snap and the Irish take over at the Alabama 38 and Paul William Bryant has never defeated a Notre Dame football team while at Alabama Pat Kramer came up with that loose football but it was fourth down it's academic the Irish with six seconds to play in the game lead the Crimson Tide seven to nothing and every indication is that it is now Notre Dame headed for the Sugar Bowl to play undefeated Georgia. Georgia with Georgia Tech remaining to play. Alabama has a game with Auburn remaining. Notre Dame's got to play the Air Force, and they must play USC in Los Angeles on December 6th. And that will be the finale to our presentation of college football at the end of the season. We'll run down all the bowl situations for you just as soon as we have time to do it, put it together. Bill Fleming has been working on it all day. The ball game is over. And for a fourth successive time, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame have defeated the Crimson Tide of Alabama and Dan Devine, who's closing out his collegiate coaching career, apparently, is riding off the field on the shoulders of his victorious Irish players. And he deserves to have the ride. There's a great victory for the Notre Dame football team. Defense dominated, stopped Alabama, but in defense of Alabama, they had a lot of injuries on offense at quarterback and at fullback. They were playing with three freshmen most of the second half in the secondary, but it was a typical college football game where both teams had outstanding defenses, a good kicking game, and very little passing. 
Yeah. So it's an exultant, though small group of Notre Dame faithful, probably five, maybe 7,000 of them here. Dan Devine walking there with Roger Valdesuri off the field with one of the biggest wins in his coaching career. He came to the Bears' lair and he beat him, seven to nothing. The most valuable players in today's game for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, Bob Crable, that middle linebacker, and for Alabama, Thomas Boyd, also a linebacker. And in the name of those two players, the respective universities will receive $1,000 for their general scholarship fund from Chevrolet. Now, here's Bill Fleming with a very happy man. Coach, how would you rank this victory on a scale of 10? <laughs> Well, we played a wonderful football team coached by a great man, Bill, and I just got a super bunch of kids and a super bunch of coaches, and we're playing for a great school, too, and uh, the name of our school, you know, is pretty significant to us. Well, now you go into the Sugar Bowl to face the number one ranked team in the nation, Georgia, which won today. I didn't know whether you knew that or not. I no, mean... I didn't, Bill, but I, I also know we play Air Force next week, and we play Southern California and Los Angeles in two weeks. So I'm, I'm just, you know, extremely grateful for the effort that our kids gave today. They just, they just gave everything they had, Bill. They didn't hold anything back, and it was a, I think it was a classic. I don't care what the score was, but if you were down on this sideline, this is what college football was all about. What did you do at halftime? Did you say anything? Uh, did you warn them about anything, especially after the explosion of Lewis right before the end of the first half? Bill, we talked about uh, no penalties, no turnovers. Uh, keep taking it at them. Uh, all the things that you want to do with basic football. We talked about a couple pass plays that didn't work. Uh, I see you went to Hunter. <laughs> well, we tried to go to him uh, uh, early in the second half. We tried to throw it. We thought they'd be playing the play action, but they're very well coached, and he couldn't get deep. It was incomplete, and then uh, the two to Hunter were uh, audibles, and Blair's a freshman, and Tony's a sophomore, and who hasn't practiced in three weeks, and, you know, to be able to pick up an audible in this hectic atmosphere is a great credit to those kids and I I just uh, like when Blair came to sideline you know one play I thought really deserved special mention and Keith and Frank both mentioned it, the play of Crable on that uh, fake punt situation when he really came up and sealed it off well I've said uh, Bill many times that Bobby's the best junior football player in the United States and I'd have to say right now that uh, you know he's all American and uh, boy he was happy today because uh, he's wearing under his shirt, under his jersey, uh, the T-shirt that says Hail Mary, full of grace, Notre Dame's in second place. And um, the thing is that we don't mind, I guess, the second place thing hasn't what bothered him, but, uh, you know, he's a very religious kid, and he didn't think that T-shirt was appropriate. And uh, But I'm sure that it doesn't represent anything that had to do with this tremendous crowd, which was very fair, somewhat partial, uh, but very fair, a good, clean ball game by both teams, and uh, I think it's safe to say there will be a big celebration in South Bend, Indiana. I think that the student body, I promised them last, or two nights ago, at the pep rally, that <clears throat> we'd meet them at the circle when we got back home, and, and um, we'd have the darndest celebration that Notre Dame's ever had. And uh, old Doug Looney there, I think he wrote it down. Uh, and and uh, I really did say that. That's not very. I told Father Joyce uh, also that we were going to win. So, Bill, I don't do that very often. It's just when I know we're going to win. Okay, Coach, thanks very much for joining us. Congratulations. Big victory. Thank, Thank you, Bill. All right, Keith, back to you upstairs. All right, Bill, thank you very much. And we'll have a summary of the bowl situation and the scores and stories of this day with Dave Dial from the College Football Scoreboard. But we're now in the final strains of a. Rather momentous day of college football in Birmingham with the Irish beating Alabama 7-0. Mr. Goodwrench, can I get an oil change for...